of snow on the ground from a storm uh, that probably completed yesterday. I actually don't know if it's done. It's jacket worthy outside, but um, I'm going to try to heat the trailer with this furnace I put in here. It's an RV furnace, so it vents to the outside. It just does a heat exchange to the inside, so there's no risk of like carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. There's no oxygen consumption stuff going on because it all vents to the outside. Oh, sorry, out of frame. And what I'm going to do is I have it hooked up to my Yeti. Last time I did this, I had problems with the furnace, like it wasn't blowing as hard as it should be, and then I found out my battery in here was dying. So, what I'm going to do is test it out today, because I haven't tested it since replacing the battery in the Yeti, and we'll see how it goes. Here's the front of the trailer, and here is the cover that I built. I don't think I showed any videos on that, but uh, I covered it with a truck bed liner. I, I did have a coat of zinc under it, but it didn't. The truck bed liner wouldn't uh, stick to the zinc, so I ground that off and put the truck bed liner straight to the middle. And it looked good, but it's been sitting all winter and the rust is coming through, so that that blows. I need to put some rust doctor on this too. This is the uh, propane stuff that I put out here. Anyway, I just have to open this. And I have a little bungee cord to hold this up here so it doesn't shut on me, like in wind or something. And let me just check and see if I got water in there. A little bit of water. Um, but anyway, this is the vent for the outside day. And I give it a shot. I keep this bungee cord strapped around the um, thermostat on the inside. That way if I forget to put it on, when I go to use the thermostat, I'll remember to go open this and make sure this is open. I have an experience where one time this was closed, I didn't know it. I was trying to light it on the inside and it wouldn't light and I couldn't figure it out. Without turning off the thermostat, I came out here and saw this was closed, so I opened it up. Well, at that moment, the um, the, fur the furnace tried to ignite again and it came out uh, and it exploded out this way and it burned off a lot of hair on my arm. Uh, singed my eyebrows, my eyelashes, and stuff like that. So um, I just make sure I wrap this around the thermostat. Now, if it's there, I, I know I haven't done that yet. So the tank is hooked up, and we're ready to go. Normally, the back would be closed, but uh, thermostat's over here. And I put this on upside down. It fell off the other day. So I put just a tiny little mark right there. I don't know if you can see it right on the top, right there. That's a comfortable 70 degrees, I think. So I'm turning this on. You can hear this kicked on. You should hear the igniter go. I'm gonna shut this door. Let's see if we can see the flame when it goes. Sounds much better than last time though. Um, last time, last time again, it had a uh, low power and it, the fan just wasn't quite blowing right. Right. I'm trying to see if it's ignited. I don't see the flame. I do have problems with that propane tank. I might need to switch it out for another one. But I've got a problem with the valve on it. Turning this on again. I switched propane tanks. I have been having valve issues with that other one. There, the flame is going. It was going. It might take a second to draw the uh, fuel into the line. I was having problems with my propane tanks. Um, I shut it off, uh, checked the connections, put it back on, and it's it's working now. If you look in the side of here, you should see a nice blue flame, no yellow. This is starting to heat up. And 30 minutes in this camper, um, in this trailer, it should heat up to a comfortable temperature. Right now, this thing is drawing 39 watts. 
that does not include the light in here that draws about nine and I've seen it as low as 26 watts but maybe that was when I had a low battery and maybe that's why it was behaving funny last time I tried it out but that's hardly any watt draw on this thing and I have a spare battery to go with it so I'm sure I could use this for a week or two out uh, without any power connections one thing I wanted to show and I don't know if the uh, sound is going to cut out when I'm doing this if I get approach the furnace but this bunk um, holds all of our stuff and keeps our tongue weight down and things ride smoothly but when we go camping we typically move we keep this bunk here we move the other bunk over this wheel well and and then I set up a couple of cots here for my wife and I and we have plenty of room um, but I was worried about this sticking out too far as you can see I, I pulled it away from the wall just a little bit that's to allow for me to reach down there if I need to to reach the electrical and stuff because um, I, I didn't want to put this like anywhere else because it would just be intrusive and in the way but in this corner where the step was already here I mean that that real estate was only holding shovels and stuff anyway so I moved it out as far as I could so that I could get my hand in there um, to there's a, an emergency switch on the side and I say an emergency switch maybe it's just a, a regular on off switch and then this bunk just barely fits I'll, but it's on wheels so I can just roll it out and move it where I need to I've done that already a couple of times and it works out well um, so I just wanted to show that another thing about the furnace is it's sitting in this wood frame that I built and except on the bottom um, the sides and the top it has a 5 8 inch gap around the whole furnace the frame covers that 5 8 inch gap so you can't really see it other than that maybe this intake on the top but basically there's a air buffer around that whole thing which is what they recommend it doesn't even get hot in there then I I put drywall in it to um, no I didn't it wasn't drywall sorry it was like a 3 8 inch particle board and then it has another cavity and um, that has the outside layer so I built this pan to go on top to kind of hold the stuff to keep it from moving and I have an emergency shutoff valve right there you can see that I have a valve on the outside and the valve on the inside so if I need to I can do that um, I was thinking about putting in a propane leak detector and a carbon monoxide detector. I haven't done that yet. Back on the outside, I put these bug screens on this. They did not come with the furnace, but they're built for it. Um, we get a lot of wasps and stuff around here, and I didn't want them getting there and in there. And when we're out camping and stuff. Anyway, this hot one is the um, exhaust. The bottom one is the intake, so this is cool down here. This is hot up here, but this is where all the combustion and everything is happening in the exchange of the uh, gases and stuff. The heat exchanger on the inside, nothing like that's happening. When I put this seal on here, I did a high temperature silicone, which you can kind of see the red right there on this very edge. But uh, you're not supposed to put these on the front of your trailer so that they don't get clobbered with everything and the wheel coming out of the off behind the back wheels of the truck. That's why I built that cover for that. This is my tank that is having valve problems. It's sat outside for many years. Somebody gave it to me, and um, I just noticed that it, it has problems. I might get that valve fixed or go exchange it for a, another tank or something. And then this tank is doing all right. I've had this one for probably just as many years as that one's been around, except this one's been protected, and so it, it's behaving all right. Okay, it's been 25 minutes since I started this up, and you can see it's about 60 degrees. Um, the temperature is climbing fast, and there's, considering all of this metal in here is just as cold as the outside, and it's warming, having to warm fight against this stuff and warming this place up, I think it's doing pretty well. Once it reaches temperature, I'm not sure how often it'll come on. Um, because it's warming up outside, I'm sure it's not going to be that often. Okay, it's been an hour. This is still running, but I noticed that the go-kart is warm. And uh, all of this other metal in here is all heated up. 
so it's no longer fighting against heating up all this cold stuff. And let's check the temperature. Looks like it's about 70 degrees. I'm gonna just bump this down just to turn it off because it's actually a com very comfortable temperature in here. There, I bumped it down to my mark and this is shutting off. I don't know if you heard it in the phone, but basically the gas shut off. It's running a cool down cycle and that should shut off. This is, this is with the light on is only drawing 29 watts now with that cool down cycle. I went and calculated um, how long I could run this straight without, you know, this has got a thermostat on it so it'll shut off when it needs to, but if I ran straight, um, I could run it for 34 hours off of this battery that's in here. That would drain that battery, which you don't want to do, so half of that, if you drain it about half that time, you're about 17 hours. Um, but I do have a second battery that I plug in and chain to this. And so I could run both of those batteries for 34 hours straight or longer um, and still have half of my battery power left. So it ought to be sufficient for what we do. We usually go camping for a few days, um, not much longer than that. And then if I had to, I could uh, always recharge these batteries with a generator or some gas generator, which I don't have, but... And now that shut off. It's very comfortable in here. <laughs>